Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. Hello world! Hope you're feeling as good as I am. I want to big up all my homegrown listeners out there and welcome all the new listeners. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. I want to thank everyone who has been listening and sharing. Please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Please check out our website, homegrownwithgcole.com, to listen and for all things homegrown. The podcast is now available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and all your podcast platforms. We're also very interactive. Please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at MyGCole. The video of this interview is available on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is episode 60. And this episode is brought to you courtesy of Aqua Gem Records' latest release, Contagious, by Mr. Chris DeMontague. Ladies and gentlemen, I smell another one. Another instant classic. Mr. Chris D. Montague is called Contagious. Aqua Gem Records V Pal Music presents. Yeah, yeah. What is wrong with me? Is our vibes, not true. I love it. Another one for your collection. Get it at Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, wherever all your digital retailers. Today's guest is an author, a journalist, a motivational speaker, and a recording artist, and so much more. Her name is Sephi Fire. I promised you guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, I promised you a guest, but it's not like when a guest comes with a guest and we end up with guests. All right. So um, let me go ahead and do the flipping. You guys have seen me for much too long. Oh, both. Yes, y'all both on camera. All right. I like to get guests that don't have no warrants because things like these happen. Things like these do happen. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest tonight is, um, and I might be missing out some things, but I just, I just, I just grabbed out a few, an author, mm-hmm. motivational speaker, yeah. journalist, yeah. recording artist, yeah. broadcaster, yeah. and host of 96.1 and uh, Roots FM's The Sephifia Sef- Show. Yes. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Sephifia. Sephifia? Yeah. All right, yeah, call me out, huh? Um, you couldn't just not ask my answer. Yeah, you got it. The set fire, fire. All right, your bun fire. <laughs> I love it. 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 Um, you also cook, yes. Right. Um, anything else? Um, no, I think that's it. Oh, and I study law. Study what? We got legal things going on here. You fly, you fly aircraft, don't you? No. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm drawing a straws, ladies and gentlemen. Set fire, fire. Oh, greetings. Thank you for having me. The pleasure, the pleasure is indeed mine. Can you hear yourself? One, two. Yes. Three, four. Five, six. I've got to get the accent in, you know what I mean? I'm just yes, milking I, it. I like the accents. You I love say the something. Accent? Yes, I dig it. Wonderful. Yours is proper. It is. I sound like I'm from the train tracks in England. Eh? By, uh, by, by the hood, you know what I mean? The hood? The, the, Do you know the, where that is located? A couple of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Big up my Brixton Massive, you know what I mean? Big up Amsden. Wills them, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm mispronouncing all that, but you don't know. <laughs> all my time. massive and crew that work by the pound store down there, you know what I mean? Don't. Easy. <laughs> Where I got my Milli Vanilli CD on it for, for just a pound. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, I thank you so much for stopping through. I know South Florida traffic can be a pain, especially coming from down south. So thank you so much. I'm glad you made it safely. Thank you. I'll get right into it. Yes, please. You, and, and for me, I always go to the beginnings because I always okay. feel like to understand somebody, you know, we got to know what's going on. True. I mean, the accent gave it away. You're from the UK. I was raised in the UK, yes. Were you born in the UK? Yes. Where in the UK? London. London. South London. Easy. South London. Yes. Is Brixton, that, actually. Brixton. Yes. Bam, bam, bam. Well, this, this, this lighter comes to you courtesy of JTMO yep, Enterprises. Brixton. Brixtonians. You know? Brixtonians. Oh, yeah. Easy. Street cred <laughs> right there. Easy, easy, easy. Talk to me a little bit about growing up in London for a young... Um, a young lady. England is... It was okay. We had a good childhood. 
Um, wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. But right. um, my mother was very hardworking. Mm -hmm. My dad is more of a lecturer, professor. Mm. Um, it was all about the books, about my history. Mm -hmm. um, my dad made a major effort for me to know my identity as an African woman. Right, right. Raised up in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. um, my mother's African. Mm -hmm. um, she's from the Gambia. Mm. My father's Jamaican. Mad. Um, but England, yeah, my childhood wasn't bad. Right, right, right. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of racism out there. Um, same thing you experience here. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really want to continue to live there, so I moved to Jamaica. Oh. I've been in Jamaica for six years now. And how's that been working out for you? Refreshing. Nice. <laughs> Refreshing. <laughs> um, the environment, the climate is wonderful. Right. Good for my skin, good for my body. Yeah. Um, I actually went out there to study. Um, doing the law, mm -hmm. um, and it's nice. I love it. Yeah. So I you actually studied law in Jamaica. Yeah. Ui. Mm -hmm. Nice, 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 nice. What branch of law? What do you mean? What branch of law? What, what type of law do you do? It's just law. The law degree. Oh, it's just the a law, law degree. Program, yes. Nothing specific. No corporate. No this. No that. No that. I haven't specialized. Yet. Mad thing. So you can do it all. <laughs> yes. I dig it. I you, dig you know, it. You normally specialize in your last year, so mm. I haven't got there yet. Oh, okay. When's yeah. the last year? Two How much longer do we gotta work? We gotta wait. Two more years to go. Nice, all right, because we gonna need you. <laughs> we gonna need you. We got a lot of a lot of talented artists coming out of school right now. Big up to Edna Manley and all them places. Sure. You know what I mean? A lot of artists, musicians, and so forth. So it always it's it's a breath of fresh air. It's very refreshing to see mm -hmm. people coming from the other angles. You studying law, mm -hmm. I'm sure with your your affinity for the music and the culture and the arts, you'll probably mm -hmm. be helping out in that arena. Of I want to say help. I don't mean free. <laughs> don't don't call it one of no pro bono crap. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't mean free. I just mean making sure we are all right. True. I love yes. it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Journalism. Yes. Another thing you do. Well, do you know something? It's something I fell into. You um, fell into. There wasn't an intention for me to be a journalist. Mm. Um, what it was, a friend of mine recommended for me to read the news for mm -hmm. a radio station. They said he wanted someone that could be articulate. Mm -hmm. And I went for the audition and they took me on. And like four weeks into it, they mm -hmm. were like, do you want it, your own show? So I was like, yeah. And then from that, I actually started doing journalism. So I started covering a lot of government issues and public policy issues. Wow. And it kind of just blew up out of nowhere. I dig it. And then on the entertainment side of things, I mean, I've interviewed some great, some of the greats in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. From like um, Ken Booth to Capleton, wow. Chronics, Protégé, Leela I.K., um, Lee Scratch Perry. Wow. Um, you know, people that I grew up listening to, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's been an amazing experience. Wow. And I, I appreciate every moment of it because it was able for me to see the other side mm -hmm. of where I was always listening to the music. But then I started rubbing shoulders with these right, right, legends right. <laughs> of Jamaica. Trust you know? me. So, um, yeah, very grateful. A very, very inciting experience. It is. I love it because it's, it's, it's you know, you grow up and you're a fan of these artists or whomever, be musicians, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like your favorite CZ, CD comes to life at some point in mm -hmm. time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Lila Ike, one of my favorites. Yeah, she's, she's hot right now. Dope. Real hot. Dope, dope, dope. And she's very unique in her sound as well. Yeah. So, and it's refreshing because you don't really have a lot of female artists come from Jamaica. Right. I mean, other than like Etana, yeah, you've got your Queen Africa, um, but it's not dominant like the men. There's mm -hmm. more men dominating the industry than women. So seeing like Savannah come up now, Lila Ike come mm -hmm. up now, even Yeza, you know, these are young, fresh women that right. are continuing the legacy of reggae, conscious music. So I like it and I have to embrace it. Well, I'm going to say this, because I've been saying this for the past couple of weeks, months, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I feel like the ladies are starting five right now. Trust me. Sure. That's how I feel. I feel like the fellas are, I mean, they're coming in, they're doing yeah. what they do. They're yeah. shooting their free throws yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that the ladies, when, when I look at it right now, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think I've ever seen a place or a time mm -hmm. where there are that many female artists doing it the way they're doing it. It's a, it is a male-dominated industry. You know, you're not going to get away from that. Mm -hmm. But there were always a time when, when you'd find a one dancehall artist, you find a one reggae, and there was just room for that. True. Right now, I've had shows where I've played two-hour shows and, you know, ladies' night and just straight up fire. Really? All ladies, yeah. Wow. All the names. That's good. Yeza yes. in there, you know what I mean? Kalia Shea, yes. Kalia, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of Ks, Kalissa you know what I mean? as well, can't forget Kalissa. Kalissa's doing yes. her thing. Mm -hmm. It's just dope. And, 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 I'm, and I'm doing that without touching any of the usual suspects. True. No Lady Saws, no Etanas, yeah, you know not what I mean? Yeah, the original legends that set nah, the pace. no Tanya, yeah. none of that. <laughs> Naomi Cowan's fire right now, mm -hmm. too. I've heard of her, yeah. Ah, a lot of, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking music right now. I'm trying to get a little carried away, but that's the, <laughs> I love it. I, I love, love it, it I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> and um, I see you said that you, you, you stumbled upon journalism. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a kid growing up, and even into adulthood, I always said there are two things, you know, like there's a uniform for certain things. Mm -hmm. If you want to get away with it, you know, a uniform is a British accent or a pair of glasses makes you seem smart. 
Really? Trust me. Trust me. And now, the English yeah, accent glasses. makes you sound, you know what I mean? And a pair of glasses. They don't True. have to be prescription, True. you know what I mean? Yeah. But a nice pair of specs, yes. and you look like you, you, you can get the job. Well, if I be honest, I mm-hmm. can't really argue with the fact that my accent has definitely assisted me mm. in my progression in Jamaica, most definitely. When they hear the voice, it's like, hey, mm. yeah, English. Yeah. <laughs> bam, <laughs> bam. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So, yeah, I mean, it works. It's like a gift and a curse. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it works in my favor, and then sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm firing a man. Yeah, yeah. You know, they kind of fang you up as a foreigner. Mm, but, you not know, authentic, huh? You have to know when to play your cards. Yeah. You know? Play what you got. Mm-hmm. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Now, you said you stumbled into that. Mm-hmm. I presume that's how you got into radio, too? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. And on your show, and I mentioned earlier, she has her own show. It is the Set Fire Fire Show. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about that show, the concept of it, the premise of it, and so forth. Well, the show itself is not live anymore. Mm-hmm. It was a year contract. Um, uh-huh. But the, the, sh- the show itself... It was called Think It, Live It, Be It. Mm -hmm. And this concept has now grown into a motivational package Mm -hmm. where I'm out talking to schools Mm -hmm. and motivating people. Um, I do empowerment sessions now at a local youth centre in Portland. Mm -hmm. And um, I've just literally taken a break on a tour. Um, Been to four different schools Mm -hmm. um, within Jamaica, actually turning that concept into a mind-feeding empowerment Mm programme. And it started from just a radio show where wow. uh, my show is very different from your contemporary show in that um, we tackled the psyche of the artists. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really about, you know, normally they just say, you know, how's your music doing? Where did you start? But my thing was like, how do you start your morning? Right. And how do you want to be remembered? Wow. And, you know, just questions try and get to understand the individual more than the music because mm. a lot of the time people want to know who the people are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, the show took off in a way that I didn't expect. And then from that, it it grew into this concept where I'm doing motivational speaking. <laughs> wow. And it's just it's just grown out of nowhere. And I'm so grateful for it because mm-hmm. the thinking if it be a concept is changing lives now. Mm-hmm. Where I can I can speak to somebody for like half an hour and it changes their whole reality. Wow. In wanting to think better so they can live better, so they can be better. Mm-hmm. And I just I give thanks for the idea in itself mm-hmm. and the fact that it's grown from a radio show to now a motivational program. Wow. And then a book, and it's just it just keeps going and going. So it's just growing right now, and I'm just embracing every stage of it. Literally you know? a domino effect. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and that's why I say when opportunity comes knocking, embrace it. Mm-hmm. Because you said somebody wanted you to read the news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. Yeah, I had no journalism experience. Read the news on Guam, okay, yeah. <laughs> None at all. <laughs> and you've done reading the news yeah. to journalism, mm-hmm. to radio. Yeah. Um, of course, fulfilling most of your passions and dreams, talking mm-hmm. to your favorite artists. Mm-hmm. To a book, mm-hmm. to motivational speaking again, mm-hmm. and um, you know it's something you could make up if somebody you, you could make that story up. No, not at all. You very, know, very naturally evolving. Wow, mm-hmm. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Um, the radio. Sh- so so now it's the contracts up. Roots. Oh no, oh no, crazy. <laughs> Just drop that out there. Y'all, y'all well, no. Sure. With all respect to Roots, mm-hmm. I had to focus on my studies. Roots and in the crazy. The, 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 the journalism got, it was so demanding. Every mm-hmm. show I had to cover, and I was a political and, and entertainment journalist. Mm-hmm. So anything that was going on with the government, I had to cover, and then it was entertainment. So it was like political at night, political in the day, and then entertainment at night. Mm-hmm. And I was missing out on my studies. Mm. And when it came to my exams, I passed, but I could have done a lot better. Right. So I had to make the choice. And the choice was, okay, step back from the radio for a minute and focus on your studies mm. because I need to, to complete my studies, mm. you know? So all respect to Roots, it was Big my choice, <laughs> oh, you know? And I give thanks to them for the start because as I said, I had no experience mm-hmm. and I covered a story for, you know, the Tivoli Gardens um, issue that happened in 2010? Mm-hmm. Um, well, they, just to summarize it, basically there was a breach of um, poli- public authority where they went into a community and there was a lot of shooting going on a lot of people died. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like a massacre. And I 2010? went. 2010? Yeah, 2010. Wow. Um, and I went to cover it. And because it was so great, they mm-hmm. then said to me, listen, look, you've got to get out there and do more coverage. Mm-hmm. They actually thought I had a degree already in journalism. Right. Because my question structure, my attitude, my approach, and what I was getting out of it, mm-hmm. they said they, I had to be in the field. Mm-hmm. So it took a lot, lot of my time. And then I had to write up articles as well. And yeah. You it know, is time consuming. And then I didn't want to miss the shows and the concerts. Right, so right. I was not mad to at that. <laughs> just trying to balance the two, you know. Not mad at that. <laughs> but no, I'm very grateful. I mean, I covered the, the chronology tour. That was an amazing experience. Yeah. You know, meeting Protégé, meeting Chronics, 
Isa, Lila Ik. So Vanny, these are like great artists mm-hmm. right now. You know, Top and of the game. being able to be amongst them and just find out who they are. Right, right. You know, it was a wonderful experience, and I just give thanks Roots FM for that. So wow. I rise at Roots FM every time. Big up, big up, big up Roots FM. If y'all don't get her back after graduation, <laughs> no. <laughs> now I'll say this: I would have told them I had the journalism degree, might have gotten paid more money, but that's a whole different concept. Just a whole different, whole different, whole different concept. You know what I mean? You can't. Sometimes you can't be spilling the beans like that. They think you got it, you got it. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes. Cut the check, Roots FM. <laughs> sure. it's, now, um, again, you're, you're an artist too, so we're gonna get into some some stuff which I discovered. Uh, Later. Okay. Later, later, later. Um, but I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. And we splash something across the screen, which I'll do so again, okay. um, which is the think it, live it, be it. Yes. I was going to ask you about it, but you, can, you, you went into it. And I, and, and I dig that because what it says to me pretty much is, though you're an artist, though you're all these things that are on your business card, your business card must be a flash drive. <laughs> but that's a whole different, whole different <laughs> conversation. Um, that's where you went to. Yeah. So it tells me that that's where the heart is and the passion Most is. Definitely. Not that there's not passion for the other things. Mm-hmm. But this, especially in a day of me, I, you okay. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's all about me. Mm-hmm. To be able to have a passion to do something that the beneficiaries of it is not necessarily yourself. That's right. It it, it it's a rare feat. Mm-hmm. It's a rare feat in in human beings. True. And um, our ethnicity even worse. You know what I mean? We can be a little self absorbed. Self absorbed. And you know what? That's culture and that's taught to us. And 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 some people deserve to be self absorbed. You know, we've earned it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you being that person. Um, I like the fact that those people who are looking up, mm-hmm. they have something and someone positive to look up to. Because right now, when the cameras come on, the lights come on, most of what they have to look up to is not positive at all. Not at all. So I dig that. Roots, big up on yourself, you guys. Um, so you, you, do you have any intention of going back after school? Yeah, I would. I think yeah. it was a great radio station. And they accommodated me in a way that, as I said, I didn't foresee myself diving so deep into journalism. Mm-hmm. And I can actually present a journalism res- resume now. Right. I covered so much in a year that there's people who haven't covered that in 20 years in the business. Wow. It was almost like a fast track journey. And I'm very grateful for it. Mm. But just touching back on what you just said um, about the think it, if it be it, um, What I'm learning about success Mm -hmm. is that you must serve. If you're not serving, something's missing. Right. And, you know, I've even been told, oh, I should be charging at the schools. And I'm like, well, why would I charge to free somebody's mind? Right. Especially children, because Mm -hmm. children, they need it. You know, when I was growing up, no one told me how to think. Mm. The pressure was what you're going to be and how you're going to be. it. Right. And if you don't do that, then this is what you're going to be. Right. But there was no instruction on, listen, look, what you put into your mind is what you become. You know, how you think and how you process your reality Mm -hmm. has an effect on what you manifest in your own reality. Right, right. And in turn, that also manifests who you become and who you want to be. And for me, when I speak to those children that look at me in a, in a state of shock, like, I've never heard this before. Right. No one ever told me that what I absorb, whether it's music, radio, magazines, conversation, social, even political, can influence your belief, and your belief leads to knowing. Yeah. So, a or lot the of lack the time... Thereof. Most definitely. I mean, wh- where we was raised, do you right. know how it is? Everything was lack. There was a lack, mm-hmm. a major lack around you. No, we don't have money for this or I have money for that. No, you can't do it. I forgot school. Mm-hmm. And if you don't go to school, come and money pay for this. And it was all that pressure. Mm-hmm. So it was like a lot of us didn't really achieve well in school because the pressure was to achieve so high. Right. Whereas a lot of the other ra- race of children, like maybe Italians, Russians, Europeans, mm-hmm. their parents wasn't telling them that at home. At home, their parents were telling them, you are great. You can achieve it. You're right. the best that you can be. So a lot of the time, they came out in school on top. Do you understand? Yeah. So for me, if I can tell a child or even adults, because I've got adults enrolled in my empowerment sessions. Mm-hmm. If I can tell an adult, I mean, my oldest participant is six to five years old. And her mind is altering every week. Wow. And, and it's hard to alter a 65-year-old mind. Well, after 30, they say don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 29 30, and a half. <laughs> well, all right, you're, you're, you're good. You just made it. But they say, I mean, no. statistics say after 30, you know, don't bother. Right. But I, the point of what I'm making is this. Tell is my that, wife that, please. Oh, dear. She's trying to change me. But go ahead. No, the, the point of what I'm making is this, is that if one word or one concept can alter someone's entire reality, mm-hmm. that is my riches. That is my abundance. There's no money that can pay for that. Mm. Priceless. Nothing at all. Right, and as long as you're doing that, you don't have to worry about abundance and success. It will just come to you naturally because right. you are serving unconditionally. Right, right. So that is my message to the people out there. If you're not serving, something's missing. You're always going to be chasing money. You're always going to be chasing this dream that you'll probably never manifest because mm-hmm. you don't want to give back something that you have that's significant to humanity. Right. 
And as long as everybody understands their purpose, life is a lot more easier. I love it. Keyword there is chase. You keep chasing the goal is you probably never catch it. But yeah, I'm telling you. Um, and that's a psychological outlook on it. But just from 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 railing it in and 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 and, and um, you know just 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 the layman way of looking at it, mm-hmm. you are pretty much helping these young men and women mm-hmm. um, to to be better individuals. But at the end of the day, the part of it that we don't see also is that 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 conversation you're having with them mm-hmm. is probably keeping them from coming and knocking down your door later on with a whole different mindset. True. Mm-hmm. Because and, and we don't think of it that way because you know you're on a different mission. Mm-hmm. You, you're there to, to 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 better these people for them. Again, it's selflessly. Mm-hmm. You're doing this for them. But at the end of the day, you're doing it for us too. Not even realizing it because okay. if if you don't do it from that angle, mm-hmm. then these same people who are going to grow up to be somebody mm-hmm. was probably going to grow up to be somebody else. True. You know what I mean? Coming at your doorstep, tearing down that door, tearing down your windows, coming in, taking what they need, and mm-hmm. leaving. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, and that's a great thing about people who give off themselves mm-hmm. because the cause is what it's about. You know, you're not worried about the other things around. It, and there's so much good that you do that you're not even aware of. True. Ladies and gentlemen, having a nice little convo here. Big up yourself, uh, Francine, everybody that's logged in right now. I'm going to yes. drop another joint for y'all because we got music. All right. Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It is homegrown. flowers today my love has gone away there's no smile on my face it's like i'm losing this race the sun didn't come out gray sky legendary pam hall ladies and gentlemen this one's called lover's holiday soon it's gonna rain oh my heart is in Tracy Christie, bless up. We got Toronto in the building. We got London in the building. We got Australia locked in right now. Jamaica's locked in. Romania. What up, Morelli? I need a lover's holiday. I need a lover's holiday. Can't even tell where I went wrong. Oh, how it all began I'm suffering so much Lord, I miss his touch But like Ben Lem, he is hiding And I just can't find him And I don't have a clue So what can I do? Na, 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 na Na, 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 na Na, 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 na Ladies and gentlemen, I'm learning so much here. Tell me what it's I guess, 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 guess is dope too. Give me a break. This is too we're gonna give a plug. We got, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do no. I'm a lonely sister, <laughs> searching for my lover. Got the blues all around me. I'm in misery. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Legendary Pam Hall, ladies and gentlemen. That one is Lover's Holiday Chit Chit Bud compilation. It's a dope one. It's a dope one. It's a dope one. We had a nice conversation with Pam Hall. Again, check out the YouTube channel, Homegrown with G Cole. Please subscribe. Click on the bell, all right, so that we can notify you when things are popping off. As I sit here and talk to you, you have a little bit of a, a aura, like you're in a space of zen and, 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 and philanthropy and, 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 and inspiring others. Wow. Um, we're... If you can identify, because a lot of times we can't, but mm-hmm. where, where, where can you identify that part of you as coming from? Honestly? Yeah. Empress Menon. Empress what? Empress you went, Menon. You went far. I thought you were going to say yeah. auntie or Marcus something. Marcus Garvey, Empress Alassia. Mud. Mud. Uh, my father, my mother, my grandparents. You know, for me, it's just continuing the legacy of Marcus Garvey. Mm-hmm. You know, um, growing up in a European country, you're not taught about who you are. Right. And that was a struggle for my dad. You know, um, to, he was fighting against the resistance in order for me to know who I was as, a, as an African woman. Right. And when I, you know, you grow up and you go through school, you go through the routine, don't you? The program. You go to school, you mm-hmm. go to college, you know, you get work. It's just a program. And I got to, I mean, I'm a, I'm a qualified accountant. So my trade is accountancy. 
I'm sorry I left that off for the intro. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Actually, I, I worked in accounts and corporate accounts for years. Right, and right, yeah, right. I earned great money, but I didn't like, I, it was not fulfilling for me. Right. I didn't enjoy counting other people's money. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? If I don't do something now, this was when I was, what, 30, 29? I said, if I don't change something now, mm-hmm. I'm just working for a pension. Right, right. So I've got to sacrifice something now. Mm-hmm. And I left the job. And I set up my own business. Mm-hmm. My dad, him cost him, cost him, cost him. I idiot. Say I make good money. I hear that I talk, but you want to talk business? What kind of business? I go set up accountancy. So I said, no, I want to be a lawyer. So mm-hmm. you know, you have no kind of law experience. Right. <laughs> so I said, well, I can write a good rational pops. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, listen, look, I can write a really, really good letter. That's that's one thing I knew I could offer. I could mm-hmm. really articulate somebody's concern. Mm-hmm. So I set up IDC, which is Injustice Defence Consultants, mm-hmm. where I was writing letters on behalf of the community, persons that were be their rights have been infringed every day, mm-hmm. from po- police brutality to credit card debts to um, unauthorised charges on mortgages. And I just started reading and writing. And the responses I started to get, I mean, I used to charge £5 a letter mm-hmm. in the beginning. Now I can charge triple that. Wow. More than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I can charge even £400 for a letter now. Wow. But I started in 2012. And the point of what I'm saying to you is this, is that I had to look into me to say, who are you? Mm-hmm. What do you want? Not what mum expects of you or dad is telling you who you are or society is telling you who you are. What are you about? What mm-hmm. makes you get up in the morning? And it pushed me to a different drive. And the success that it received in the first year, even I still can't believe I received that kind of success. Wow. And that came off Marcus Garvey's motto of self-reliance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you have self-reliance, you are independent, you become a lot more responsible. Mm-hmm. When you're an employee, no disrespect to my brothers and sisters that they're working, mm-hmm. but when you're an employee, you have nothing to be responsible for. Mm-hmm. The most thing you have to do is get up and go to work. Mm-hmm. Or you sell yourself on a piece of paper and you turn up every day. It's not really challenging. Right, right. When you have to rely on yourself to eat mm-hmm. and pay rent and to move and to clothe for yourself, there's a different drive. Right. Because if you don't do it, you can't clothe yourself, you cannot eat, you cannot pay your rent. Right. Whereas all you've got to do is go to work and you get into a program. Mm-hmm. Nine to five, right, it's five, got, I'm gone. End of the month, you've got this money in your bank. Mm-hmm. So all you're doing is trading your time for money mm-hmm. rather than trading your worth for money. Right. And even though I always paid good money as an accountant, they could never match my worth. Mm-hmm. And I, was, mm-hmm. I wasn't getting fulfilled from the money. Right. Whereas someone paid me five pounds for a letter and I was fulfilled because the response that they were getting, that was more than money. It was changing someone's life. You were helping them with a the skill that I had. Mm-hmm. And then went to Jamaica. I expanded into estate management where um, I managed persons' estates for Jamaicans that reside outside of Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of my clients are like, listen, if you're in Jamaica, can you check out this land for me? You can check out this property. Right. And then it expanded to another division. And then that's, that's doing well as well. So if there's any Jamaicans out there that have interest or land in Jamaica, but you don't have anybody where you can trust to manage your affairs... Link me. Mad things. Link me. Mad things. And we do everything. We do administration management. We do land maintenance. We do rentals. We do everything. We right. do the vetting and everything. And even if you need documents like birth certificates, marriage certificates, we assist with that as well. What if they want a husband or wife? You can hook that up. Um, I got some links. <laughs> <laughs> I got some links. But the, the point of what I'm saying to you is this, is that... I grew up thinking that it was a job that was going to get me to self-fulfillment. Right. And walking into the unknown, Mm -hmm. which I have to say, your victory is always waiting for you on the other side. Mm -hmm. But because we're so used to certainty, we stay in the job. We stay in what's comfortable because, all right, I know if I go to work from nine to five for four weeks, I'm definitely going to get that two grand at the end of the month. Security. But if I don't and I put something into myself, there's no certainty in that. Mm. Right, right, right. So people run from that. Right. And that's why a lot of people conform to our program. Mm -hmm. So for me, breaking out of the program or the matrix, what they like to call it, Mm -hmm. um, that was liberating for me, you know, and I feel that I'm paying homage to my ancestors by trusting what they left behind for me to follow. Wow. So where do I get my my inspiration from? My ancestors, Mm -hmm. including the ones that are still living. I dig it. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. And the good thing about it is because a lot of times when we look to, um, like you said, Empress Men and we look at Marcus Garvey's and so mm-hmm. forth, you know, they're, they're predecessors. Mm-hmm. They're in the past. And a lot of what we know off of them, we've learned from literature and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Good thing about what you're doing right now is there are a lot of people right now who are alive and well who can benefit from what you're doing. So when I ask them, who inspires you? Mm-hmm. Who, who, who makes you feel comfortable in getting up in the morning and going to trot that trot and walk that walk? And they mm-hmm. can say, yeah, it's a fire fire. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? True. Somebody who's sitting right here with us. True. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to, again, we just added accounting to it. Um, and a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> we got coming up. All right. But I want you to, I mentioned to you earlier that, that, that she's also a recording artist. I'm going to jump into something right about now. We just yeah. want to splash something for her. Yeah. All right. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It is homegrown. Yeah, man. Give thanks and praise unto the most high. Most high. I'll make sure that you always try. Always try. Yeah, we take you out of desolate places. Uh-huh. Like Black Rainbow. Hundred dollar me have left. In on my pocket and me no judge and none left me. On my last step, not my last breath. No, no way. Spine up, my mind right. So me know so everything I got all right. With a Rastafari and Nesta by my side throughout the day. I feel like running and I skipping and I dancing and jumping for joy. Cause Rastafari is high glory. Got me for sure in every way. I feel like running and I skipping and I dancing and jumping for joy. Cause Rastafari is high glory. Got me for sure. Hip hip hooray. Tracks call a hundred dollar. All if I did one set me up, Jam would I make it multiply him now? Call left me out the road, him know the wicked them so slight. Remember that is the truth, is the way your knees the line. I think Jam is set over. Man. I am if I did one pound, I don't want you to yard it off. Say me never have no butter, think a light just come and look Righteousness that me a deal with, it is written in the book All ungrateful must get shook I feel like running and a skipping and a dancing and jumping for joy Cause Rastafari is high glory Got me for sure, in every way I feel like running and a skipping and a dancing and jumping for joy Cause Rastafari is high glory Got me for sure Hip hip hooray Hundred dollar Pre-release, ladies and gentlemen, it ain't out yet. The only place you're going to get it right now is to tune into Homegrown with G. Cole. Go to iTunes if you don't believe me. Go to Spotify if you don't believe me. Check it out. $100. Big tune. Big tune, big tune, big tune, big tune, big tune. And as an artist, you go by, let you. Black Rainbow. My things, my things. You're going to have to explain the Black Rainbow. Um, I have a thing about rainbows. Mm-hmm. When I was a child, well, that's all I ever saw was rainbows. Mm-hmm. So there was times I used to say, can you see a rainbow? And nobody else could see it. Wow. But I'm black, aren't I? <laughs> so for me, a black <laughs> rainbow is the impossible being possible. Wow. So that's why I said I'm black rainbow. I dig it. I like that one. <laughs> and the feature on it is? Brown Lion. Mar- no, more Rise Up Brown Lion. Yeah, it was, me and him done two collaborations together and he really assisted me. Mm-hmm. And he didn't need any direction. He just jumped on the track and just dealt with it correctly. So I want to rise up Brown Lion from Jacksil, Jamaica, Kingston. Yeah. Also, I want to rise up Digital Sham. That's that engineer. Give mm-hmm. me a beautiful, clean sound. Nice. And just rise up all the Jamaican people at the same time. Big up, big up, big up. She does it all, ladies and gentlemen. Here, <laughs> here's what I like. And I, I, I talked to another artist of mine, Jayut. Mm-hmm. Um... A lot of time we live in a world where I know Jayu. You know Jayu? Yeah, man, he's an excellent artist. The Fern the Burner? Yes. You know Jayu? Yeah. I'm sure I interviewed him as well. Dope. Yeah. For real? Yeah. All right, Jayu, hit us up. You might rise up yourself, man. Hit up, hit up. <laughs> But sometimes, it's like the like it all, it all, it all comes together. The dots are connected. As we mm-hmm. speak to you about you and the personal life, the philanthropy, you know, the art and the whole nine, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem. Sometimes you see some things that seem very contrived. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, you know, the art sounds like that, but the lifestyle looks like that, and cool. vice versa. Cool. So I dig the fact that it all, you know, it's like a tapestry. It's all entwined. It's intertwined. I <laughs> dig it. I dig it. I dig it. You know what I mean? Get my little accent on. I love on. your accent. You're Easy. Good at it. Have from, you been to London? I, I, I have, but you know, this is this is this is picked up from uh from watching uh what's his name? 
Uh, I'll tell you in a minute. There's a couple of shows that used to come on in Jamaica. What's it called? Um, with the barbershop. Desmond. Oh, yes. <laughs> used to watch Desmond. Oh, Desmond. You know what I mean? used to love that show. Mm. Desmond was dope in a barbershop. Yeah, proper. I don't think I have him cut my hair. But I've never <laughs> seen him cut no hair in a barbershop. <laughs> Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Clive, big up yourself. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, we got a lot of people logging on right now, and I'm just glad to share the information because you do come with a wealth of information and inspiration that I think a lot of people can benefit from. A lot of upcoming artists watch the program. A lot of young people watch the program. Oh, okay. So it's always glad. It's always a great thing to get some inspiration. All right, who's that? That is Black Rainbow. Somebody's hey. asking, Chana Nicole, dope artist too. She just released a compilation called Queens in the Arena, Kemet Rhythm, mm -hmm. all female cast, ensemble, yeah. productions, the whole nine. Sorry, what did you say her name was? Chana Nicole. Chana Nicole, rise up yourself, sister, every time. Easy, she's dope too. Mm -hmm. I tell you right now, I'm telling you, the ladies are, the ladies are, the ladies are killing the game. Well, you do know that we run the world, right? I'm, yeah. <laughs> and, a, I mean, you guys haven't been doing a great job of it, so I think it's our time to take over now. That kind of sure. is true. That kind of <laughs> is true. Um, I, I'm not in denial. That's the thing with me. I got a wife at home and I got a daughter. Excellent. You know what I mean? So it's evident once I wake up in the morning. <laughs> but the thing is, I am I am also, I, I, I'm in agreement with that. We've been messing up. Mm -hmm. It is time for us to sit back mm -hmm. in every aspect, mm -hmm. not having to cut the lawn, none of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When I say sit back, I mean straight up, sit back. Yep. Now, the music that you put out mm -hmm. as an artist, because when, when it comes to people who do what you do mm -hmm. outside of the stage in the studio, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we look at them with such, you know, you expect a stoic person. You expect somebody who comes, it's, it's all intellect and it's all that. And the music is intellectual too. Okay. But then you have the artistic side of you. Do you have to make an effort to differentiate the, the two? In other words, when you walk into, um, let's say, a school or wherever, is, is Black Rainbow walking in too? Or is it just Sapphire Fire walking through those doors? Do you know, it's such a good question because my cousin was just saying that earlier. She said, why do you just pick one name? Why you got all these different names? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying to her, listen, look, we're mind, body and soul, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my mind is different from my soul, from my body. Mm -hmm. But Black Rainbow is a combination of my mind, body and soul. And Black Rainbow is, she was born in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that because England, I had a concept that I couldn't sing. Mm -hmm. because I didn't sound like Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston so it was like put that to the shelf stick right. to your books mm -hmm. you know and going mm -hmm. to Jamaica Jamaica will inspire you to do things that you thought was impossible right and you know people encouraged me you know Call weed. and uh, sorry no I'm just playing <laughs> <laughs> My God, my <laughs> you know, Jamaica is a very creative island. Right, you know, right. there's nothing really people can't really do there. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, also with the journalism as well, that kind of inspired me being around a lot of artists. And you see artists from different levels, mm -hmm. different ranges. You know, and um, if I be honest, I tell you who really inspired me to really take the punch. I don't know if you've heard of Tough Like Iron. Mm -mm. She's a wonderful female artist. Um, Let me write that down. What's her name? Tough Like Iron. She right, right now her music shut. My thing, tough yeah. like iron. Yeah. All right, and it's and spelled like that too. Yes, tough like iron. My thing. One word, My and um, another sister called Yeza. I love they Yeza. inspired me to say, you know what, get into the studio, yeah. get into the studio and see what happens, and I did. And that's why I want to rise up digital sham because he was patient with me. Mm -hmm. You know, he taught me about my breathing, my diet, you know, using my diaphragm. You know, he told me everything. So these and are your first recordings. Yeah. Wow. And wow. if I tell you the history of that hundred dollar, mm -hmm. uh, I want to rise up my cousin Cass every time because at the time I was staying at the radio station and mm -hmm. where I was living was so far from the radio station. So I used to sleep with him mm -hmm. at his house mm -hmm. and the man in Megato a hundred dollar met off. In Jamaica, that's it. In Jamaica. Mm. I said, oh, this is a go-go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me I go reach. I said, oh, the dollar I've left. And I was at the back, bathing outside. And there was a church, like a school church. And they were singing, I feel like running, skipping, mm -hmm. praising the Lord. So I was like, yes. So I said, me just incorporate it and say, ah, ja, ja. It's mm -hmm. my glory, you understand? So that's how it was born. Wow. And it's a true story. Mm -hmm. It's not no mediocre thing. This right, really right. happened. Wow. You know, and I give thanks to my cousin as well because he helped me in ways that not many people would have helped me. Yeah. And I stayed with him for like the first six weeks when I started the radio mm -hmm. before I got paid. Right. So I had to like be walking to the radio from his house. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that song was born from his inspiration. So I want to rise up Kasif every time, straight right. from Tower Hill, make up yourself cozy every time, yeah? Easy, easy. You never know when you're being motivated. You never know when you're being amused. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing what you're doing. Give that helping hand, lend. And it's all about positivity. And I feel like mm -hmm. it's something that comes full circle. Mm -hmm. You know, now as far as energy-wise, you know, you've got that dope, you got a chill energy. 
I do. The music's the music the music is potent. Okay, from what great. I can hear. You talk about Yeza. Yeza has that too, but Yeza is a militant. She, yeah, she got a militant she, vibe. She you know what I mean? She's our soul rebel. rebel she up. is straight up. Rebel up to my sister Yeza every time. Punching the throat. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but she's dope. No, but she's stern. She's, she's stern she got in that. her lyrics. Yeah. And she's a very strong, powerful empress, a lioness. Love me some Yeza. You know, so I love her too every time. Had a nice convo with her. Um, hopefully we get to sit down in person in the studio and, have, and chop it up with her. But mm-hmm. um, like I said, the ladies starting five. Mm-hmm. Doing what they do, and I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Now you've had the, um, the, the 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 advantage of being on the other side of the fence too, radio yep. and all that stuff, mm-hmm. interacting with the artists. So let's talk a little bit about music, radio, the Jamaican scene. Mm-hmm. Um, since Jamaica is considered the mecca, the epicenter for this reggae music, mm-hmm. and we find that many overseas base—I want to say overseas—I mean like Jamaican artists that are here. Yes. End up. Um, Repatriating is what I want to say, mm-hmm. so that they can have a career start. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I've so many of South Florida. We have not been able to break any artist. We've seen the Atanas, the Taurus Rileys, the yes. Ezrons, a lot of the dope ones. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Here and then they had to go back home. In your eyes, from your vantage point, I'm being on that side of the fence. Is that a prerequisite? Do people have to? Go? Do you think it's possible to be here mm-hmm. and break in reggae, not music in general, mm-hmm. but in reggae music, or is that whole repatriation thing a must in order to get your break in the industry? Well, I tell you something about Jamaica. You know, mm-hmm. people like familiarity. If they don't know who you is and where you come from, mm. where you come from, Miramar, they don't know what that is. Yeah, it's it's a lot about who you are. Mm-hmm. So yes, there's a possibility, but if you really want to bust in Jamaica, you have to go yard. You gotta go back. You have to go yard and make people them know who you are. Mm. You understand? And you have to, you have to be able to offer your talent to the Jamaican people, so right. they, so to speak, can validate you mm-hmm. and then put you back on on the market. Wow, <laughs> wow. That's what it is. Cause them say if you can't bust a broad, you bust a yard, oh. Same so formula. That, and that mm-hmm. is the tradition. You can't bust a broad until you bust a yard. I dig it. You I understand. It, so it, any it. artist out there that's trying to get into the reggae industry, you're gonna have to go to Jamaica. You're gonna have to do what you gotta do. Because I, I feel that the country, the land itself, is a contribution to the sound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trying to do reggae in another country that is not Jamaica, mm-hmm. you're not gonna get that authentic reggae right. sound because right. you're not you're not daddy. It's like foreign rice on peace. Ah mm-hmm. my things. You know, it's kinda diluted. Even though you've got a lot of um, international artists that are breaking into the reggae scene right. and they know they're doing their thing, they're handling their thing. But see the, the thing is, I think the it, it worked the international artists can do it, the ones mm-hmm. who are non Jamaican. Mm-hmm. Because the, the expectations are different. That's right. There's a certain sound that you're not looking mm-hmm. for from them. True. You know true. what I'm saying? True. But I but I, I was I even spoke to um Dean Fraser right here and he was saying, Well, guess what? You gotta go back home and dip your foot in mm-hmm. that water, you know Definitely. what I mean? Um now as far as radio goes, because radio is an entity that, you know, is created to bring the information out to the masses mm-hmm. but it is a very political landscape you know what i mean and yes. and, and, and uh <laughs> you know I, i'm choosing my words here for the coming one but if you know yeah <laughs> but you know I, I, is radio doing what it's, it's rightful doing? duty or is it just another branch of the hustle you know what i mean that's his radio do, y- do i have to comment on that um here's what i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna put the blur right here <laughs> don't move outside of the blur no i'm gonna keep it real mm-hmm. i'm working in radio to answer the question not entirely no Mm-hmm. Um, we're in a time now where everything's money. Mm-hmm. It's not about your authenticity. It's not about your originality. Mm-hmm. It's not about your sound or who you capture. It's about can you put your money where your music is? Right, and that's right. just the end of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I say that with regards to the in- industry as a whole, mm-hmm. but DJs now, mm-hmm. they have that power to say, you know something, me I go boss you, me I go play your music, me I go. You understand? Right, so right. I find that the individual. Mm-hmm. will more be um, achieving the objective of a radio out- outlet, mm-hmm. which is to push good music, push the good message, isn't it? Right. But the industry as a whole mm-hmm. is a money-profiting industry. Mm. So if you don't have your money, mm-hmm. you can't reach the people that are waiting to hear your message. So a lot of the pressure now is get your money up. If you can't get your money up, you could be then in the then studio then. for the whole year. No one's going to hear that music. For your whole life your whole life but then there's two parts of that like you mentioned um you know the djs mm-hmm. are a responsibility the onus is on you to push the music out mm-hmm. there that's what they do mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but then the hustle part of it comes into play True. so are they pushing out the good sound or are they pushing out the sound that got paid to get pushed out well actually what, i can only speak for myself yes. okay and me the blur's pers- here don't worry then can't see if he's <laughs> <laughs> me personally i never charged any artists right right because the sapphire fire show was about bringing a sound to you that mm-hmm. has been restricted because of the financial limits. Mm-hmm. So my show was always free, right, do you right. understand? And, you know, having 
people like Protege, Yeza, Lila, IK, I was grateful for their participation mm -hmm. because they helped me make the show. Right. Do you understand? So it was like a two way street. You come, you yeah, interview, you hype up my thing. You understand? Right, right, so right. that for me, that was the currency. Right. Whereas I find that. Capacity. Yes, most definitely. I mm -hmm. find that there's a lot of DJs that they're just looking about their pocket. Mm -hmm. And in an industry like being um, a host or a radio producer, you know, it's a two way street. Mm -hmm. They want the exposure and you want the recognition as well. Yeah, for having understand? those artists so on. You can demonstrate your skill as an interviewer or whatever. Right. You know, so my policy was always free. Right, right. You know, and if it was a matter that producers are like, listen, you've got to get some money in, me, Pierre Tota, my own pocket. Right. You understand? Now, right? but that's me personally. But 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 then uh, that's another side of it too. Mm -hmm. and, and and as as we talk about the DJs and we talk about re radio, I think the lines got blurred, and I think that's what half the issue is because mm -hmm. right now what we've got is a lot of sound system DJs on radio, right? Yep. So pretty much you're taking a man from other the street, the street mentality, never mm -hmm. got taught in radio and all mm -hmm. that stuff mm -hmm. to come on and do it, and he's doing what he did in the dance. Hall, that's right. Right. But at the same time, I can't tell the last artist that I saw really. Had, and it must anyway, mm -hmm. and I think that's the reason why, mm -hmm. because you know you're not you're not pushing it from a genuine place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now speaking of radio people and radio and mm -hmm. and DJ and the music and all that, mm -hmm. there's also the other side of it, which is you've got to invest. It's not about paying somebody to play. Mm -hmm. Promotion is a different thing. Most definitely. You know what I mean? Marketing is a must. Marketing is a must. If yes. somebody, but when the cars come out, I mean, Honda doesn't have to market the stuff the way they do, but they do. Mm -hmm. but you know they, what I mean? In the beginning, they did. They did. Until their name was established to where they don't mm -hmm. no, no longer need And market. the crazy thing is they're doing it more now. Mm -hmm. They don't, we would say they don't have to mm -hmm. because you know what a Honda is. That's right. But every time they drop a new whip, they got to they gotta market it. Mm -hmm. Because Toyota's got one too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's a situation where I think artists also have to learn that side of it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of artists, I do realize when we sit down, I have little symposiums, little seminars, we sit down and talk. And we talk about that side of the business where you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your craft. You have to, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. You know, if these microphones, Audio Technica, mm -hmm. I only went and bought it because I knew who they were. You know what I'm saying? True. And that branding is well, essential. a name is everything, isn't it? A name is everything. It's and everything. How do you get the name out there? That's right. Got to get the branding up. So so, so long and short of it is, you've got to invest to in the out. marketing side of mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? Do a commercial, put it out there, let everybody know what your name is. Because a lot of times the music plays, it's dope. Nobody knows who sung it. True. You know what I mean? True. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with the ones who know about it. Again, she does taxes too, so check her. She has you covered. We're jumping into another joint right now. Keep it moving, keep it grooving. It is home ground. Brown Lion. Uh huh. Black Rainbow. We are going to sound the alarm. Loud and clear. And we not let go. Never. We have to take back with soul. Never. We have to get in control. Sound the alarm, we a go sound the alarm Black rainbow she a come, she in a full coat of arms Sound the alarm, we a go sound the alarm Sound of a vice and babel and a keep calm Sound the alarm, we a go sound the alarm Black rainbow she a come, she in a full coat of arms Sound the alarm, we a go sound the alarm Sound of a vice and babel and a keep you calm see, I put it in my mind and create a little vision I had a smile with the old Asian passion Competing with the mic which are jacking me when I am meditate and relax and High school and green is all they see is where me step on Them my ask me who me is and where me come from Me tell them say me born of a African in a Babylon and a seed of a Jamaican Sound the alarm, me tell them sound the alarm Oh, them I tell this real light for keep calm the only time we could I ever keep calm when the pit the day my pay and we are reap on the farm. Well, on the I put my style on. I do me tell them say me born a London. This one's called Sound the Alarm, ladies and gentlemen. Rise up, this it is dope. My daddy has set up the spiritual man. Sound the alarm, we are got sound the alarm. Black rainbow, she a come she in a full coat of arms. Sound the alarm, we are got sound the alarm. Sound of a vice and babel and a keep calm. Sound the alarm, we a go sound the alarm. Black rainbow, she a come, she in a full coat of arms. Sound the alarm, we a go sound. You can't see you feeling this one. Sound of a vice. Morelli said flames. Calm. Brown lion. Rainbow. Sound the alarm is the name of the joint, huh? Yep. And this is you on Brown Lion again. Mm -hmm. Y'all doing a duet album or something? Well, do you know what? 
what? No, we're not. No. But um, he he was it's divine timing. He was just there at the studio all right. the day. And what happened was with sound sound the alarm. Um, I needed something to fill up the track mm. because me on the track kind of sounded flat. Mm-hmm. So he come and give me his little boom man yo right, right, and right. him hype it up. You know what I mean? Energy. So, but this was the first track I recorded. Oh, okay, okay. So when I went to the studio to do hundred dollar, I said, "Bro, man, come in, man. Come in." I mean, give him a look of verse, you know? But I didn't tell him what... Normally, I write everything. Right, right. But I didn't write his verse. He just went into the booth and eat, and it was so in sync with wow, the track. Wow, wow. So I knew it was divine. Chemistry. You know? Yeah, man. So I rise up brown line every time. Big up, big up, big up. <laughs> big up, we we'll say. Ladies and gentlemen, um, first of all, and, and I'm going to ask you to drop your social media info because I need a massive to go out there and, and, and follow you on social media. Be inspired, okay. as inspired as, as, as I am. Um, let me drop something else up on the screen here. Think it... Live it, believe it. Be Trust it. your power. Is be it? Yes. All right. I'm not 29 like I said before. <laughs> All right. Please accept my sincere apologies. You're good, man. You're I good. did touch the 40 mark this year. All right. I'm a little injured. Apparently, my eyes are injured too. So, yeah, it's be it, y'all. Make sure I say on a keep up with the thing. Think it, live it, be it. Trust mm-hmm. your power. Yes. And it, it just, just, just those little words, those little lines mm-hmm. are so potent. Trust your power. A lot of people don't know that they have power. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. And I, I, if I can just elaborate on mm-hmm. that, um, to all the listeners out there, everybody has something. Everybody has something that they're exceptionally great at mm-hmm. that no one else can't do like you. Mm-hmm. And what happens is when, you've, when you're born in a program, which you've all been born in, you think you know who you are. You don't even know who you are because you never tried to do anything that's made you feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. or anything that brings uncertainty. And music was uncertain for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I come from a family of singers as well. Right. And their singing is on a different scale. Right, right. So I was always comparing myself to a very high standard. Wow. And then I used to devaluate myself to say, listen, look, forget that. Mm. put that on the shelf mm-hmm. and what Jamaica did for me was it allowed me to embrace my identity who I really was and just diving into it even just listening back to the track now it's like it's more than a dream come true it's a purpose come true wow do you understand wow. I feel like the dream is something when you're sleeping so you chase a dream mm-hmm. but see when you're awake it's all about purpose and destiny mm-hmm. and if I can liberate anybody that's on this plane right now mm-hmm. that is struggling with self identities struggling with negative thoughts struggling with you know who they are then it's my duty to fulfill that so trusting your power is trusting you trusting you have the ability right. trusting you can deliver trusting that if you put work into yourself you can be who you see and feel inside you and i felt a lot of all of this i felt in england it was so hard to manifest right, right. because the key thing was just getting the job make sure you got a job make sure you pay the bills make sure you you know you, you can't dress in colors i mean going to jamaica it brought out the rainbow in me because mm-hmm. in england it's dark navy black mm-hmm. gray if you wear yellow people are looking at you like you i guess it's just like was. the skies huh yeah so i have to rise up jamaica every time Mind. Because Jamaica, Black Rainbow was born in Jamaica. Sif I Fire Show was born in Jamaica. My writing skills are booked in Jamaica. Um, I've released my first book already. It's mm-hmm. called What's It All About? It's a right. Sif I Fire um, Confessions, mm-hmm. which is dedicated to all of the guests that I had. Right. Um, from Empress Savita, as I said, Protege, Chronics, Kamaka Pyramid. You know, all these people made me. So I can't take full credit for that because I was nobody. I was a local English girl, mm-hmm. come from nowhere, talk about she a journalist. Wow. And me send them out looking for theater and them, and them come and entertain my show. So I have to pay homage to them because right, right. I didn't have a name. Right. They made the Sefai Fire show. Mm. So I'm going to rise up every single artist that gave me their time Absolutely. and said, all right, we're going to give you a chance. Mm-hmm. You understand? And people came and I weren't paying for people's expenses. Right. I mean, even look at Protégé. He's in demand. Mm-hmm. And he came to the show for free. Lila Ike, Yeza. You know, all these people, chronics, all these people, they don't owe me nothing. Right, right. So for me, I have to pay homage to them because it takes two to build. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the point of what I'm making is it takes you and your soul to build who you are. Mm -hmm. Trust who you are and trust your power. People say you can't do it, prove them otherwise. Right. And if you can't do it right the first time, keep going until you get it right. Because every thought that comes into your mind and every vision you have, you can manifest it. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know how you can do it. But you have to know in yourself. It's beyond belief. Right, right. Belief is the beginning stage. But see, when you know, Mm -hmm. you can deliver. I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's Sapphire Fire's Observations. What is it all about? Where can I get that? Um, On Amazon. 
Is that available on Amazon? Yeah, you can download it on Amazon immediately. Kindle? It's Kindle form? Yes, there's Kindle form as well. Um, it's, it's just about some poems. It's just like, it's a poetry combination mm-hmm. of my experiences on this FI Fire journey. Um, hence why I dedicate it to all the participants because each poem represents an interview or something that was revealed in an interview mm-hmm. or an experience on the field or maybe a report I did when I was in the House of Representatives, dealing with politicians. So it's just a combination of kind of uplifting poetry. Ladies and gentlemen, check that out. The book, the book, the book. Sapphire Fire's Observations, What Is It All About? Mm-hmm. And um, I love poetry. Excellent. Good poetry. Mm-hmm. Dig it, dig it, dig it. So it's always nice to have um, a nice little book of poetry because I think what it is is it's it's it's, it's like shots, you know what I mean? Where mm-hmm. you, you get the message, you get everything in a couple of stanzas. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't have to read 10 paragraphs to get the point. True. You know, refreshing. It is easy, easy literature is what I call it. Mm-hmm. So I love good poetry. Ladies and gentlemen, again, make sure you go ahead and check out the artist. Make sure you check out <laughs> the poet. Check out the author, the motivational speaker. And um, you, you, you're, we're going to drop again in a second some information for them to follow you. Mm-hmm. But talk to me about also the Rasta Must Give Back program. Okay, so Rasta Must is a foundation that mm-hmm. I set up. Um, in that Rastafari liberty is a must. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I set it up because I wasn't giving back any charity. Mm -hmm. And being self-employed, I wanted to give back. So, you know, normally when you're working, you're able to kind of give back in a different way. But being Mm -hmm. self-employed, I'm in control what I give back to. Mm -hmm. So it started in 2015 where I would cook food and just give away clothes and print T-shirts and just give things away to the local community. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The first time I did it, they would say, she she not right. <laughs> <laughs> she not English. She not know what she had. She look laugh. <laughs> I made more money on the first event mm-hmm. than any other event I did after that because people were coming and giving me. But I said no, I give them good good something. Yeah, me have me something. And it kind of grew. Um, the second session, Chronix and Kalissa was the guest um, artist wow. for that event. So we we'll rise up Kalissa and Chronix every time for that. Mm-hmm. It was a wonderful event. There's a lot more artists there as well. Like um, Warrior King was there. Um, who else was there? There was quite a few of them. And it was a wonderful show. And the whole point was to give back to the community. Mm-hmm. So we were giving them music. We were giving them food. We were giving them clothes. We printed some Rustamus um, merchandise, cups, T-shirts, badges. And just gave back. We've mm. Not to receive anything in return. Right, right, other right. Other than fulfill the people and say, listen, there is no catch. Right. Do you understand? Right. And then going back to Rastafari liberty, and when I say Rastafari, I'm talking about Rastafari, mm-hmm. which is the original liberty of Ethiopia. Right. Not the diluted culture of Rasta that's happening now, where mm-hmm. there's no disrespect to the Rasta community out there. Because I'm mean, Rasta too, you know. Right, but right, right. But about the original article, mm-hmm. way of living. Do you understand? So for me, I'm trying my best to become the best empress I can be. Do you understand? Because the youth, the Western world doesn't teach about being a bit empress. It teaches right. about being a woman, being an independent woman and all these things. Easy. Which is nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But being an empress is totally different. Right. Do you understand? And I feel I have a duty to my younger sisters and just to the women, the mm-hmm. wider community out there, to demonstrate a different way of living as a female. Wow. You know, so, yeah, that's it. I mean, the, Rust- the Rustamus um, Foundation is something that anybody can contribute to and we can deliver it anywhere around the world. Right. And it's all of it's a 40 day um it's a 40 day ritual in that you must give back to your neighbor. So for example, if you've had a certain amount of shoes or clothes and you haven't worn nothing for the year, give it to somebody that needs it. Why are you still holding on to it? I like that, right? You know, like you that, can't yeah. get anything new if you don't take out the old. Mm. So it's all about just the fact that we do have more than enough to provide for everybody. And a lot of the time, one person has all for themselves when there's another nine people out there that could have the shoe, have the trainer, give them this, give them that. So it was just a concept to say, give back. Yeah, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love your outlook on it, the whole Empress vibes. Well, I'm tell you, these dudes out there right now trying to holler, he's got a lot of pressure, man. They'll be like, yo, this girl, yeah, man, you How know you what? doing? <laughs> <laughs> she going to put you on the rest of us program. <laughs> <laughs> what about Everything Gourmet? Okay, so Everything Gourmet, um, this is interesting. This is a, a food branch that mm-hmm. I have. Um, you know the drum demo you send, like the barrel demo you send on? Mm-hmm. What happened was, it was so funny because the person I got to build it for me, I had this vision in my mind. I said, Tim, you know something? We can turn this into a cooker. So I go, go sit down. We are talking about cooker. 
I said, that can be a cooker and we can steam in it and toast it. And I designed this drum mm-hmm. where you can steam, smoke, fry, bake, boil, everything. I me tell you, say, the whole day, the man fight me down, him fight me down. He said, my God, this can't build. It can't work. I said, cut it this up. <laughs> yeah? And dig out all them dressing and with it. And no, when it done, the man said, but what? I hope you patented. I hope that's patented right now. So what happened was, um, it's, it's gourmet idle food. Everything gourmet. Mm-hmm. Meaning that everything's idle. But it's gourmet, meaning that you get a a small, tasty serving, Mm. but it's very filling. Mm -hmm. And as you know, what you eat is who you are. Mm -hmm. So for me, I love to cook. I mean, I'm sitting next to one of the biggest chefs here. So I just want to rise up my cousin, Arissa, Mm -hmm. sit inside of me. Um, Just want to rise up also her business, Arissa's Kitchen Mm -hmm. and Delights and Treats. And she's a wonderful chef. Um, I've been even been inspired by herself and her mother. Arissa, your mic is open. Drop some information and people can find it. No? Yes. Mm -hmm. No. No? That's, that's the social media handle? You can handle? follow no? her at Claire Bear <laughs> on Instagram. Um, she's on Instagram at Claire Bear. Um, if you want your orders in or you want any inspiration, give her a link. She's an excellent chef. I want to rise up her mother as well, Patricia, um, where I was exposed to this wonderful taste of food as a child. And her daughter, which is my cousin sitting beside of me, has continued the legacy. And being inspired from like just food being cooked in a traditional way, but with a different spin to it, you right. know, um, I was inspired to do food for myself and um, the food was very cheap that we were selling and it kind of took off in a way that I didn't expect either and we first launched at Monique High in St. Anne. <laughs> Big up my parish. Are you a parish at all? Oh, Chirias, born and raised. What are you saying? Yes, ma'am. I run where I come from. See, I'm thinking, well, yeah, not just... come from, but you hang out, you yeah. reside. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's but we'll, but we will claim you. We will accept you because you're doing dope things. But yes, the, 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 the children love the food. Right. And that day they boycotted the the vendor bar. The man cuss him, cuss him, cuss him. Oh, said, I oh, would too. People don't come. And <laughs> no, we don't want no chicken that day. All the children said, I want anything I come out at the drum day. I want it. Wow. And the teacher them send them back a class and take all the other them. We don't sell out the day. Wow. The pity them loved it. They said, yeah, my Rasta food. My roster food every time. Big up money, guys. So, um, everything gourmet, the end vision for everything gourmet is to have restaurants mm-hmm. internationally. Mm-hmm. Because I feel as Rasta, we don't have the outlet. Mm-hmm. We don't have a place where we can go and eat food 24 40. That's healthy, right, right. That's delicious, flavorsome, and affordable. Mm-hmm. That is so true. So if there's any investors out there that want to invest in everything gourmet, link me. Mad things, <laughs> mad things, mad things, mad things, mad things. I like it, I like it, I like it. Now drop them social media info so the masses can find you. Okay, so there's a few pages. You can link me at Black Rainbow, but mm-hmm. Black Rainbow is spelled B A B sorry, B L A Q R Y N B O. That's Black Rainbow. You can also get me on Sun Star Connoisseurs and also have a small project called Righteous Liberty TV. Let me ask you a question though, my girl. Yes. Where you find time for doing all of them things in? Yeah, triplet. Yeah, mind, body, and soul. Mm, I dig it. Mm-hmm. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. You see, when you tap into yourself, you'd be amazing at what you can create. Mm. True. Sure. And a lot of the time we've been trained not to even think. We just do, 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 do. So you don't even take the time to sit down and hear yourself, what mm-hmm. yourself is telling you to do. Or mm-hmm. it's like, go pick up a pen and write something, man. What do you do? Yeah. So I missed out, right? Before you know, I thought I was writing poems right, for right. years. Mm-hmm. And it was a brother said to me, my girl, you know, say, you're an artist. Wow, you're writing songs. Why not a studio? That's a studio. What kind of studio? I said, no, I'm good. Poems. <laughs> right, right, right. And it was he that said to me, this is music. This mm-hmm. is not poetry. You've gone beyond poetry. Wow. And this is what I'm talking about. Belief, what you put into your mind, because he planted a seed into my head. Mm-hmm. I always told myself I couldn't sing. I always mm-hmm. told myself, forget that. You know, so what you think, you live, you become. That's all I can say in a nutshell. I love it. The thing that I gather, and a lot of times I listen to, as I listen to, I gather little things from it. And here's mm-hmm. what I get from that. I'm going to put this out there into the, into the ether. Yes. Be around the right people. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. truth be told, that person that gave you that inspiration, some people will take your inspiration. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And there are more people who will do the opposite than than, than that. So mm-hmm. so even just being around, big up whomever it is that's giving you, what's the person's name? Got to big them up. 
One remember. But um, you know, just just big up because you know, for somebody to even identify that and say, Hey, boom. Yes. You know, it's way easier for somebody to do the negative and to discourage you. Well so I gotta big him up. I'm gonna rise up Black Thunder. Big up Black Thunder. From Riverview, Easy. Kingston, rise up the wall of them down there. Um they really supported me when I first came to Jamaica as a foreign girl. Lost in the big city, and they already took me under their wing, and they looked after me and told me, "Michael, going to the studio." Man, you understand? So I rise them up every time. Black thunder to the world. Big up, big up, big up! And I want to thank everybody that's logging right now. Peter G, um, we definitely got to talk. I want to bless up Mr. Hope and Linda, all the massive and crew. Right now, we got people all across the globe. Uh, Morelli is no longer in Romania. I'm finding out she's in Birmingham. Oh, she's across oh, the border. Huh? I've got family in Birmingham as well. Actually. Easy. Yeah, they rise up the Birmingham family out there. She done bounced and left Europe behind. You know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't mad. I want to thank our Stacey. Big up. Thank you so much. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Yes, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Love you all. Man. And just remember as well, because you're just saying something about being around, around the right people. Mm -hmm. Also, don't be scared to be alone. Mm. Sometimes you have to shed the people around you to get to know yourself so you can attract the right people to you. I love that. We've had a conversation with somebody who was talking about relationships too. You know, the people who are always in these toxic relationships say so they can't find the right person, but that's because you're hanging around the wrong person all the time. Well, so, yeah. So yeah. the right person see you and think you're, you're, you're otherwise engaged. True, but a lot of the time, and I can speak as a woman myself, mm -hmm. is um, it's what you've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. is what you subconsciously interpret as normal. True. So what you subconsciously interpret as normal will become your norm. Mm -hmm. And then you have no other standard because you don't know it. So, for example, women suffer from father syndrome, mm -hmm. where a lot of the women that you date resemble traits of your father. Mm -hmm. Same with the men. You suffer with mother syndrome because the only woman, the highest level of woman you've had in your life is your mother or your grandmother. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time you attract that around you mm -hmm. and no disrespect to the mothers and fathers out there, but sometimes that is not good for you at that time. Right, right. So it's always good to look into yourself and figure out what do you like? What do I love? What I, what, what don't I like? Sometimes you don't even know, you don't, you don't even know what you don't like. I like, but, but, but <laughs> that's a, <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry I get carried away sometimes. It's but um <laughs> It's true. I mean it's big up mix a lot. Um <laughs> It's so true. And then what happens is you wake up two years later and think, What am I do how did I get here? How yeah. are you in my life? How two are you years. here? I'm telling you, because it goes by so quickly mm. and you you're living a norm. But it's not your norm. It's a norm that has been programmed into your subconscious as a norm. Yeah. But as you're growing, you realize, actually, I don't like that way. And I don't want to accept that anymore. And that's why people can be in relationships for years and wake up and say, hold on a minute. I'm not the person that I was when I met you. Mm. Wow. And a lot of the time, it's the vibration you're vibrating on at the time you met that person. So at the time you met the person, they look very attractive and appealing. Right. And then you could be growing, evolving, and the person has stayed the same because that's who they are. No. But you wasn't who you was. Right. So once you evolve now, you're like, mm. how was I even attracted to you? you? You look at the person that you didn't recognize them. It's like a hot picture that should be posted on your Facebook profile. Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out. Post what you look like. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? I'm going to drop this one right here. I want to thank you so much. Everybody, again, go ahead and make sure that you follow. If you can't, Google Sapphire. Yes. All right. Yes. Sapphire. Yes. Fire, say it so fast. Seth I fire. Spell it for the masses and crew, please. S E F I P H I A H. <laughs> and what the, where the name come from? I mean, my birth name is Safrina. Mm -hmm. That's what my mother named me. Mm -hmm. And it's Seth I fire. Mad. So that's what Seth I fire is. I dig it. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we got so much more coming your way. I'm going to give you one more right about now. Then we can come back and wrap this up. Keep it moving, keep it grooving. Home ground. Like I'm starting 
This one's the energy I'm feeling right now, ladies and gentlemen. This one's called Like a Bird. It is from the album Ultraist. G. Cole and the Robson Chris Band. Make sure you go ahead and get that one. It's time for us to get up out of here, though. I want to thank my guests, Sophia Five, for coming through. And for her guest, who goes by Anonymous, because she don't want nobody Clarissa. to know who she is. But her name is... Clarissa. All right. One more time. Clarissa. Clarissa. Stop hiding from the cameras, all right? You never know. <laughs> and anybody out there that would like to give her a place where she can distribute her feud, link her on Claire Bear on Instagram. And there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has indeed been a pleasure. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Homegrown with G. Cole, available now on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all your podcast platforms. Also, check out the website, homegrownwithgcole.com, to listen and for all things homegrown. To watch the video of this interview, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Homegrown with G. Cole. Remember, be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. My name is G. Cole. And this is Homegrown. Nakikinika Sa Musica, Homegrown with G. Cole. Estás escuchando Homegrown con G. Cole. 您现在正在收听的是 Homegrown with G. Cole. You're listening to Homegrown with G. Cole. Remember all the music played here on the podcast Homegrown with G. Cole is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. Please support the artist.